We are live. Welcome to Andor Season 1, Episode 1 through 3 Thoughts. And I am going to go, th I, I'm going to put time codes for when I, you know, I start with the first episode. I'm going to put the time codes for episodes 2 and 3 in the description box if you're not interested. I might spoil all three episodes even when talking about the first one so do not watch this if you haven't watched all three. The first episode is called Cassa which is apparently Cassian's ah, what's the word? That was his name before he was ah, I don't know if we want to call it adopted or kidnapped or what exactly, but yeah. And yeah, so I think it was Sean Chandler Talks Movies who said that, you know, this looks like a more mature show than Obi-Wan. It's more of a cinematic experience than the last several Star Wars live action shows, which have all been filmed on the volume. This looks like a classically shot movie. I have to agree, you know, we have sets, complicated camera work, the works. And in interview, Diego Luna said that Cassian is an immigrant far away from home, working for years to get his footing. Star Wars has always been about the unusual hero building empathy for them. This is not the first time that the person has been an immigrant. Ray was one. But this spends more time on the immigrant. And... Yeah, it's set in BBY-5, five years before the Battle of Yavin, the climax of Return of the Jedi. I absolutely love the cyberpunk feel. It's exactly right for the story. And within the first few minutes of the pilot, Cassian has ordered a drink, been told not to sexually pursue the bartender, clearly in a place where illegal things go on, they are confirmed to be a brothel, is following a lead and harassed by security plane cops. We are definitely in a more mature corner of the Star Wars galaxy. I love how long the camera stays on Cassian's face as the guards approach. It's just absolutely incredible acting. And I, I like that, you know, once he has the power in the situation, he says, tell me now, tell me what to do. You know, clearly this is something that, you know, he and the others are, you know, the, the, the downtrodden are so used to being told what to do. And we find out that Cassian accidentally killed one of the guards, and the other guard is terrified that Cassian will shoot him, and he does. We knew from the movie that he's willing to kill an ally to not be slowed down, and here we see that he's already willing to shoot someone defenseless. An enemy, sure, but the guy was offering to help him clear his name. Great hook. I gotta know what happens as consequences of as consequence of these two deaths. I love how gritty, grimy, dirty, and lived in this is. This is what Star Wars started out being and what it eventually got away from. And Another Star Wars story, and a droid. I like the point that it takes more energy or power to lie than tell the truth. I mean, here, it's for a droid, sure, but, I mean, in reality, it's, you know, if you're just telling the truth, you don't have to remember what lie you told. I quite like the flashbacks to Cassian, and, you know, he looks like a teenager to me. Others have said preteen, so something like that, you know. And Cassian gets brass of life from. We get a sense of their relationship. I approve. And really, that's a lot of the this first episode is him going around to talking to people, getting them to lie for him. And we see that the security guy boss doesn't want the two deaths investigated. And he explains quite well what would be the problem with yeah. And so, yeah, the, the flashbacks are to before the immigration. And we actually, you know, we, we see 
what they were like before the immigration and this is this is an extremely important part of a story of immigration because this is what they had to give up when you know when they came to the new country you know and they i mean you know they seemed fairly content in you know on kinari and i quite like you know cassian talks his way out of trouble with nurchi talking to vetch the supposed muscles and they know each other you know he's like are you really gonna you know i forget the exact but it's like really you know and he's like i mean nurch just Nurchi told me I just had to stand here, so, you know, clarify, no, no, he's not there to, you know, beat him up or even threaten to beat him up, he's just, you know, I just, I just have to stand here, you know, he doesn't really think about the, yeah. Finish up, get out, don't come back. Some places with some people, you know, Cassian might have for a while gotten some leeway, but yeah, you know, eventually it runs out. And I think it's an interesting choice that the, you know, in these three episodes, when someone speaks in Canari, it is not translated. You know, I figure it might be to underline how great of a language barrier there is between Canari and Galactic Basic, which, you know, to us, the viewer, sounds like English. Or I suppose other languages, if you watch it dubbed. And yeah, we get a good sense of the Canari tribe, the different members, and yeah. That brings us to the second episode, season one, episode two, That Would Be Me. Now, let's see. Uh, here we go. You know, I appreciate the weight given to them finding, you know, I... I guess it's a crater, but yeah, you know, when this is clearly, they're not, this is not something that happens, you know, every Tuesday. This is, this is a big deal for them. And Marla is nervous by the fact that the security people know that they're looking for a Kinari person. And, you know, we know that the reason they know that is that you know he asked Kinari you know to the 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 one at the brothel and she said let's see they had one but she left a while back and yeah you know she talked to the security people and yeah it, it you know that is really like he's he's looking for his sister he you know there's not much left of the you know he's not he doesn't get to speak his own language anymore he doesn't dress the way he used to the the name is different all these things you know he just wants to find his sister there's there's so little left that he can connect to his original you know his original home with and oh did I say Marla I, uh, Marva yeah I did not spell it right in all my notes Marva and apparently you know she's the one you know her full name is Marva and or so that's where he got that last name you know as a as a tribes people they don't necessarily have last names they don't need them and 
Yeah. Let's see. And the the uh, what's the word? Uh, you know, the the security officer. I didn't catch his name. Uh, you know, he he's working with the. You know, he he finds the sergeant who completely agrees with him. And let's see. you know, and yeah, and and it's this thing of like these. I'm gonna go ahead and call them cops because they behave like they actually are cops. They don't know the 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 environment they're walking into. They don't understand how these people, you know. I mean. As far as I can, I'm, I'm not, did a single person react with kind of the, the, did a, did a single person think, oh, phew, police, now we can finally get some order around here. No, they all, you know, they, they take care of things themselves. There's a, like, it's a, it looks like a relatively small community and a lot of people know each other. And yeah, they they probably they handle things quite well. And in come these cops who are just like gung ho and like yeah, you know the the way that they approach it is very reminiscent of how a number of situations in the U.S. have been handled when it was an immigrant community or even just, you know, non-white, even if they've, you know, been American for generations, rather than first-generation immigrants or such, and even with native people, you know, native Americans, the, the cops have been absolutely brutal, and just, yeah, so, you know, the, the, Ah, right. The the I forget who, but and one of my fellow YouTubers pointed out the the you know them clanging the the you know them making noise to signal the 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 neighbors to you know for all of them to prepare for this you know that it was reminiscent of like in some you know low income areas. You know, they might shout 5 0. And. Let's see. Yeah, so, you know, Kinari, the, the Kinari people start out basically like indigenous people. And the ship landing, you know, it, it was a crash. So it's not quite the same as a colonizing force, but. They behave, the you know. There's no reason for them to shoot. You know, there's no threat, but they think like they essentially react as if they see wild animals. You know, if you see if if you crash in a place that you don't know and you see wild animals, I mean, not everyone will, but I can understand people who would like react, thinking, oh, I mean. They might attack us, so we have to make it clear that they shouldn't attack us, that they're, that we're more powerful than they are. But it's just, it's people, you know, but they're, they're not, they're, they're not dressed the way that the, I want to say separatist, yeah, they're, they're, you know, they have the separatist markings on the, the people who crash there. You know, so these separatists are like, you know, they're not dressed like us. Their weapons are strange to us. Uh, you know, I f did one of them try to talk to... I, f I forget, but, you know, certainly, yeah, they consider them foreign. Some, yeah, some people can't distinguish between is this just different from me or is this below me? Is the, you know, are the... Is this a group of people who are closer to animals than they are to me? And 
but but yeah so you know basically the the Cassian was part of an indigenous tribe I I you know when I heard that it's an immigrant story you know my first thought was oh like you know South Americans going to America uh, you know so you know they they there's there are some differences yes but you know obviously there are bigger differences between native peoples and then colonizing forces and yeah there's way too little representation for indigenous people in popular media popular culture there, uh, there's definitely way too little empathy for it. You know, the, the uh, I forget, what was it called? The Ridiculous Six or something had a bunch of people walking off because they were so disrespectful to Native people. And, like, they were just a punchline to, to the people making the movie. And I forget who, but at least one of the people making the movie were like, what did you expect? Like, like they, they didn't show any appreciation of... You know, the, they, they had absolutely no empathy for the people that they were using as props for comedy. Now, yeah, so we see the, the um, yeah, the, you know, one of the Canary women is killed and they grieve over her and carry her dead body back to camp, but Cassian stays by the ship. And the sergeant and security officer both give speeches. I appreciate the detail that clearly they don't think much of the regular citizens. Like, they scoff at the notion that they should even get to file complaints. So, yeah, a lot like American cops. Like, I don't remember the exact... Uh, the exact phrasing, but, like, you know, they say... The, the sergeant says something like you know, they can always, you know, remind them that if they have issues with our methods, they they can file a complaint. There's like a monthly, uh, you know, and it cuts to one of the cops and he's like, yeah. So, and yeah, so the episode ends with Luthen approaching by ship, Cassian on foot. And the blaster that Andor has at the end is the same that Kal Katarn has in Dark Forces 2. So that's, and, and, you know, they apparently, like, Cassian Andor is in part inspired by Kal Katarn. Certainly, there's a, yeah, there are a lot of, there's a lot of resemblance. Now, I don't, I guess if you don't know that that's what you're looking at, you can't necessarily tell. But I do have Dark Forces right there. I have a copy of the first one, but it's a digital copy, no cover. And my copy of the of Dark Forces 2 also has Mysteries of the Sith. And I also do have copies, digital copies, of Jedi Knight, Jedi Outcast, and Jedi Academy. So yeah, I you might say I'm a bit of a fan of Kyle Katarn. And that brings us to the third episode there we go season one episode three reckoning which is quite a good yeah good title for and see. yeah you can really tell that this was made by Tony Gilroy. Like, this feels like the kind of thing that he would write and direct. Which, as, as far as I understand, he did both write and direct these three episodes. And, yeah, the... the um, what's the word? Like, this... You know, you get a real sense of the the places and the people and the sort of yeah their their relationship with politics and police and and yeah and 
Right. Right. And the, yeah, the Primor, you know, yeah, like I said, they, you know, they act like local cops. We have not spent very much time with local cops or people acting like local cops in any other Disney Plus live action Star Wars or the, the main movies. You know, the 11 main movies. Great cross-cutting between present and flashback. You know, in both cases, Cassian might be caught. And we see that Marva, you know, took Cassian away from Canari. And, you know, you, you do understand. Like, it is the, you know, yeah, if they find him, they will kill him. And, yeah, you know, that is... Um, and that also, like, when you see... Cassian and Marva together like it's a complicated relationship because like he understands that he's you know he, he's not trying to get back to Canari but he you know he has some information that maybe his sister did make it out you know and you know I mean he went to the right place he was just late you know the brothel like the woman specifically said yes we had a Canari woman, but she left, you know, I've, months ago or so, something like that, you know. So that's, yeah, you know, so, so yeah. He would not still be alive if Marva hadn't sedated him and brought him, you know, but at the same time, she didn't ask. That, that wasn't, it wasn't his choice to go with, so, uh, yeah. And let's see. yeah, and the Primor harass B and Marva. This was definitely made by people who realized that some cops abuse their authority. And yeah, and, and some of the people are upset the Primor harass an old lady, so they leave some men behind, you know, so that they won't like you know, so so that they'll be scared away from trying to you know argue or or anything to, you know it's it's just what well, uh, what's the word intimidation and great scene of Luthen and Cassian talking like if you in a movie or TV show can make people talking compelling you know you're yeah that's that's good direction writing acting, and editing. Now, let's see. You know, when I, yeah, when I, I suppose I should expand on, when I say editing, I mean the choice whether to stay in a single shot for a really long time and just let the performance play out, or to, you know, cut between close-ups and that kind of thing. You know, that's very important for... You know, which does also split up the performances. And Tim gets shot trying to help Bix. The situation didn't call for lethal force, but the, this is probably a cop that was trained to protect his own life, even if it meant hurting, possibly even killing someone innocent. You know, like, it's not a flamethrower he has, it's not a rocket launcher. If he shot in the, the foot or leg, you know, Tim would still be alive. And and that actually, you know, Tim was the one who helped them find, you know, the, um, n narrow down the search. But, you know, to them, at the end of the day, he's just another one of these, you know, poor people living in this bad neighborhood that, yeah. That's what a reckoning sounds like. I do love me the gradual buildup. And Cassian holds the officer at gunpoint. And the transport ship was tied to a piece of debris, ends up crashing and exploding. And, you know, we get a, a close up of the guy who clearly did this. And it is this sort of thing. Like, yeah, you know, that's it's easy if if you're from there. Especially, like, he apparently works at the, you know, at or very close by to where they landed. So, yeah, he did, you know, there's plenty of pieces of debris around there. So, all he had to do was tie the two together and then make sure he wasn't 
close by when it happened. And they use a decoy, Luthen blows it up. I can't wait to learn more of Luthen's rules. They've done a lot of good already. So never carry something that you can't control, which other some of my fellow YouTubers have pointed out. You know, maybe that was what Cassian was doing at you know, in his introduction in Rogue One when he shot the the guy that was slowing him down. And the second rule was build your exit on the on your way in. And yeah, the I'm I'm really I enjoyed the Thor movies and you know Skarsgård in them, but I do really love seeing Stellan Skarsgård in full, like just ah, what's the word? Like when he is being the the yeah, when he's like intense and serious and such. As a Scandinavian, I have seen that a number of times. Right, also I really loved how the you know the the factory stuff gradually collapsing during the fight. And as you know, Sean Chandler talks movies points out you know the the different people have different motives during it's it's not just you know oh they're you know Luthen and Cassian are just on the, like Cassian gets so like he he legitimately thinks Luthen might be you know an imperial who is trying to like cuz he knows a lot about Cassian the stuff that Marva has trained Cassian to keep secret you know and Luthen is staying there saying it like, you know, so casually. Like he doesn't, you know, he's he's familiar with this and he's used to being familiar. Ah, what's the word? <laughs> yeah. I hope I'm making myself clear, you know. And yeah, Cassian is legitimately not sure. Like, from his point of view... If Cassian goes with Luthen, what's to stop Luthen from turning him in or shooting him in the back or something? You know, Cassian works alone by and large. You know, he doesn't really seem to. So, so yeah. And I think it might also have been Sean Chandler points out. You know, lots of narrative lies, and you know the the. Ah, that might have been a different, but yeah, one of my fellow YouTubers points out, you know, even when we meet the security people, like, the boss is setting up, you know, he's talking about, this is what really happened, and this is the narrative that we're going with, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, ev everyone, there's constantly narratives. And everyone comments on Cassian's, you know, he, he has a little bit of a, a face, uh, yeah. A bruise, I guess. And... Yeah, and, and the officer is shocked he can't move. He legitimately couldn't have imagined that things would go this way. And Cassian being taken away from Canari, and Cassian leaving Ferrix with Luthen intercut in both cases. He thought he could stay for longer, and, you know, on Kinari, he probably thought he could stay forever. We, you know, it's not clear how much they know about, like, other planets and, and such. But, yeah, you know, in both cases, his life is uprooted. And, yeah, he hasn't seen his sister since leaving Kinari. And Cassian used to be named Cassa, now goes by Cassian. Many immigrants had to change their names. And... Yeah, you know, I, th I think it was also Sean Chandler Chops Movies points out, you know, this is different action. This is not just, you know, running down an identical corridor in an Imperial facility. And, you know, yeah, it's... it's yeah, I'm I'm really really loving the show so far. I realized I didn't comment on everything. I 
there's not so far there's not really any element of this that I have any real problem with. I think you know yeah, I I like that they're you know, we we get a real sense of this community of you know, poor people maybe I I'm not sure, but I could imagine a lot of them are immigrants and just yeah, you know, these these working class people who you know, like the the yeah, I don't think we saw even a single person legitimately be happy that there were now these cops there, you know. And I mean, Tim, you know, it's it's probably that he thinks, you know, he's worried that Bix is cheating on him with Cassian. And yeah, you know, a lot of people are 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 just extremely uncomfortable with that you know because he's not the only person who realizes that it might actually hold on i guess most of them don't know he's from canary do they and the fact that no but yeah yeah tim i'm not sure tim knows that cassian is from canary but he knows that cassian that there's something going on you know, Cassian is being kind of erratic these days, and he's, you know, yeah, I, I, th I think that is what that was. You know, and Cassian goes around to a lot of people, saying, you know, if someone, if anyone asks, this is what happened, you know, and yeah, the vast majority of them agree, you know, so yeah, and let's. See. The, um, yeah, I, I like the uh, the the middle-aged or older guy, you know, talking to Luthen about how you know how things have changed and how bad it used to be, and and this, yeah, and I quite appreciate you know I mean I mean at this point we are basically used to but yeah um, Disney's Star Wars has a number of actual practical effect you know I would be extremely surprised if Vetch wasn't a practical effect that doesn't look at all and think about how how much that means the fact that Nurchi and Vetch are on either side and casting the thing there in the middle like it is completely clear, you know, like, if Vetch was actually there to hurt Cassian, what's he gonna do? You know, he's not gonna be able to duck out and, and get away from there without at least one of the two grabbing him. So the fact that there's actually someone there, you know, and it's it's like a prosthetic kind of, you know, yeah. And actually, I heard that the guy who's wearing the prosthetic, that's his own voice. You know, that they didn't dub him or anything. You know, the uh, B2 Emo is an actual, you know, uh, you know, and that is, to be fair, they couldn't have made all these, you know, that's an actual, like, uh, if I say robot, some people are going to say that's not the exact right term. It's a, it's a, um, it's a remote controlled effect. I forget what they're called. I hope you know what I mean. But yeah, you know, obviously it's not like a robot with AI, but it's a remote controlled thing that, you know, again, instead of just using CGI. Yeah, uh, I didn't feel like any character was like you know, only started existing when the camera revealed them. I feel like all of them have a past, have history. And, yeah, I really appreciate, you know, different people react differently to Cassian. And I really like that, you know, Marva, like, Cassian is the only person who knows where the, let's see, I think it was, like, money or something for, for Marva, where that's hidden, so he's gonna tell B2 Emo, so th that he can get the, ah, what's the word? 
yeah, so that, you know, she can get it, and, you know, he also told Bituimo, you know, make sure that she turns up the, the heat enough so she isn't freezing, and, you know, I, f I forget the name, but one of the others, you know, said to, to Cassian, tell your mom, she got it, she has to turn up the, the heat, you know, and, yeah, you know, it's probably like she's worried that they're spending too much money on the, on the heating, but she's too careful with that, so she, you know, like, if, if you're elderly, you, you really, you know, all ages, you gotta be careful not to get too cold, but it, yeah, especially, like, elderly, you know, if, if you're elderly and you have it too cold, when you realize that you're too cold, it might be, you know, too late for you yourself to do anything about it, and she does live alone, you know. I like how many things are implied, but not outright stated. Yeah, you know, every scene had me really engaged. I really love that this, you know, like, this isn't really an action-driven show. It's, it's a character study. And, you know, we have so much, like, if you want... A Star Wars story with a lot of action like you know you must be watching this on Disney Plus Disney Plus has all 11 movies all of them have a lot of action so you know there's really no ah, what's the word it, not all of these have to be the the same you know and the the world the the galaxy of Star Wars is compelling enough to um, support this kind of character-driven, you know, less action-heavy kind of thing. The, the, um, uh, what's the word? Um, right on the tip of my tongue. You know, for sure, there are some stories where I'd be like, really, character study? That's not going to work for this. But this, yeah, it really is the the what's the word D yeah the star wars galaxy has always been this really complex lived in world and yeah i i'm really really happy that they've approached the show this way you know i'm not sure how many like you know I doubt children would be interested in this, maybe some teenagers, but otherwise it is made for adults, and that's great, because there's already so much, like there's some Star Wars that's explicitly for children, a lot of Star Wars is made so that it will appeal to children, but so that adults can also get a lot out of it, and here we have, you know, I'm not sure, I, th I think this might be the first live action thing actually maybe film star wars in general i'm not sure about the animate i haven't watched them yet but yeah the the um, i am intending to i i do intend to watch most of the series of the of the shows you know the the if you go to wikipedia there are let's see oh that is not the right place. Hold on. Here we go. There are animated series, animated micro series. I'm not sure I'm touching any of the micro series, but I'm definitely doing at least half of. Yeah, you know, at this point, I might as well. I intend to watch and do videos on The Clone Wars, Rebels, Resistance, The Bad Batch, Tales of the Jedi. Maybe also Young Jedi Adventures. I'm not. <clears throat> I don't know enough about that one yet to say for sure. I am considering Forces of Destiny, but the the micro series. I I'm not 100 percent sure, but certainly that one does. You know, uh, let's see. It yeah, it centers on female characters featured in previous Star Wars installments, and I think most of them have gotten too little character stuff in the 
very Star Wars. So yeah, really, really glad that that's yeah. So the yeah, I I really look forward to next week's episode, and yeah, I I I'm really really glad that they you know for sure Rogue One the movie has issues but Cassian Andor is a very interesting character so yeah catch you next week